now, I'm here today to talk about Artifice. Um, besides helping customers to deploy um, OpenStack Clouds, Catalyst is also running its own OpenStack Cloud. And of course, we need to build clients uh, for what they use. Um, I believe most people running OpenStack are pretty much in the same situation. They either need to charge uh, customers for what they are consuming, or they need to split uh, the running costs of OpenStack internally across uh, different departments. Uh, if not, then you're lucky, and uh, this talk is probably enough for you. Um, so the first question is, why Artifice? And we know that Silometer provides us with uh, plenty of usage information and has got measurements covering uh, almost everything you want to know about OpenStack. Uh, and Artifice is the tool that will help you to convert that usage information from Silometer into money or invoices that you can send to your customers. Um, here is a 10,000 foot view of um, Artifice uh, architecture. Uh, as you can see, it's very simple. Um, we have a component called Clark, and what that component do, does is it reads service rates out of your ERP system or any system you might have in place already um, in your company, and it can also read it uh, from CSV files. Um, there is another component, um, Artifice pro uh, properly, which will pull the usage information from uh, Silometer, combine both things, and generate the invoice back uh, into your ERP system or whatever system you're using to invoice uh, clients currently. Now, let's talk a little bit about Artifice features. Um, it integrates with Horizon, if desirable, because many companies just want to use their existing portals uh, to interface with customers. Uh, but there is an option to integrate uh, with Horizon. Um, it has a pluggable architecture, so it can read service rates and generate uh, bills or invoices uh, inside whatever system you are already using. Um, it supports multiple regions and varying prices uh, per region. Um, we know that billing is a delicate thing, so we've built in some um, error checks and some constraints that will um, avoid stupid things to happen like invoicing uh, a client twice for the same thing. Uh, in our own implementation, um, our ERP system stores uh, data for 10 years, uh, but we keep, uh, Artifice has got a, a configurable retention period where we also keep that information in Artifice for another year. So if something goes wrong and we need to regenerate an invoice or compare you know, the state of the ERP with what, what is in Artifice, uh, we still have that data. Um, from the beginning, we have planned to share Artifice with others. So we've tried to follow closely the architecture used by other OpenStack projects. Uh, it's written in Python, has got REST APIs, used SQL Alchemy and Django. Uh, and it's fully open source and will remain fully open source. So, Here's a preview of what uh, billing looks like in Horizon if you enable it. Uh, we are currently exploring some ideas on how to best present this uh, information uh, for users. Um, to install Artifice, it's super simple. Here are the dependencies. Uh, and thanks to the Debian packaging system, all you have to do is to satisfy those dependencies uh, and install Artifice Deb package or pull its source code from GitHub. Uh, and in the near future, it should also be in a PPA repository so, uh, just to make things even easier. Um, so far, we have only tested Artifice on Ubuntu um, LTS, but depending on how the community reacts to the project, we may start testing Artifice on other platforms as well. Um, to configure Artifice is super simple. Um, Here's a sample configuration file on slash etc slash openstack artifice.conf. Uh, the first section here is where you define the database used by Artifice. The second section is where you define the plugin uh, that you will use uh, for uh, your invoice. Uh, and then you have the specific configuration for that plugin. In this case, the output file, the output path, and the row layout you will get. In this case, I'm using the uh, CSV plugin. And finally, you have the OpenStack part of the configuration where you have the authentication URL for Keystone, um, your user credentials. And um, at the moment, you still have the uh, Silometer endpoint there. Uh, but in the future, that should come just from the uh, Keystone catalog. So that's something that will change. 
Um, so to use Artifice, um, besides the REST interface, Artifice provides you with uh, two simple command line tools, Artifice Usage and Artifice Build. Um, Artifice Usage, as the name implies, will display the usage information for a given period of time. Uh, and the output will combine the information coming from Silometer and the pricing information uh, coming from your ERP system. So in this case, in this case you can see um, a tenant has been running three VMs for one hour, uh, the cost for each VM and the total cost uh, in the end. Um, Artifice bill is the common line tool that will generate the bill or the invoice uh, properly. Um, and it will do it via the plugin uh, you're using. Here you can see a sample CSV file coming out of Artifice where we have a given tenant, the range of time, um, the VMs that they've been consuming, the size or the type of that resource, the location, the region, uh, the uptime, the rates, costs, and the total. And you can fully customize that in the way you want. Um, so both common line tools offer you all the parameters you expect, such as the time range and if you want to specify a specific tenant or so on. Um, now, what's coming next? Um, first, I need to emphasize that everything I have shown you so far is experimental code that we have produced for ourselves recently. Uh, it's just a spike that happened inside Catalyst. Um, and at this stage, it's a seal rough around the edges, but it does its job, uh, works for us. Um, now, there is some discussion going on with OpenStack core developers uh, about incubating uh, open, uh, Artifice as an official project. Um, we believe this is a sensible thing to do because billing is still a missing piece of the puzzle uh, for many organizations using OpenStack. Um, however, we are not planning to introduce Artifice as a fully formed project and just drop in the code there. Uh, we are planning to um, create the blueprints, engage with the community, understand what is required there. And then if we can reuse some of the code we have developed, great. If we have to rewrite the whole thing, that's also okay. Um, now, we have an important decision ahead of us. Um, Artifice has been originally conceived as a bridge between your ERP system or whatever system your company uses to invoice clients and Silometer, um, but not an end-to-end -end system in itself, right? It's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's not trying to become an ERP system by itself. Um, so it's probably a good time for me to mention that there is another project um, called Billing Stack, I believe, um, who, and, and the guys there, they have taken a different path and they are trying to implement the, the whole thing, you know, some fun functionality that you would get from, from your ERP system. So if, you know, I think time will tell uh, what architecture is the most sensible for the community, and one of them should stand up as a, you know, a building project for OpenStack. Uh, and we're just planning to engage more with the community and other companies planning to use Artifice and understand what makes sense to them. Uh, in, our, in our opinion, most of them already have existing systems, and they're just looking to plug Silometer uh, data into it in a satisfactory way. Um, now, Development of Artifice continues at Kellis. Um, during the last month, we've been playing with a few things. Uh, we've been working on a standalone uh, web interface uh, for managing service rates in case you don't want to store them somewhere else in an ERP system, in case you don't want a CSV file with your rates. Uh, so in this case, you can see for a given region, uh, we're just defining the prices for uh, three fictitious services uh, in there. Uh, Again, not sure if this is the direction that Artifice is uh, heading towards, uh, but it's something we're exploring. Uh, we're also commencing work on a plugin for OpenERP, which will not only allow Artifice uh, to generate invoices inside OpenERP, um, because we don't need a specific plugin for that, it's already possible via the OpenERP APIs, uh, but it will allow from OpenERP for you to link customer accounts with tenants in OpenStack. And that's an end-to-end -end relationship. So if you want to group a bunch of tenants or projects inside OpenStack on a single customer in your ERP, or if you want to do the opposite, if you just want to split the bill across different departments of the same organization, uh, you can also do that. And 
Here it is. If you want to try Artifice or if you want to get involved, um, here is the GitHub account where you can find its source code. Um, my friend Orin Shaw uh, is the main person, the main developer behind it. Uh, so if you have questions, if you would like to explore some ideas, just send an email to Orin or myself. And I also would like to acknowledge the work being done by Adrian, uh, who has been working on the Horizon uh, integration. Um, and before we get to the questions, um, I just would like to mention that Catalyst is hiring as usual, both in Australia and New Zealand. So if you guys are interested, please come and talk to one of us afterwards. And Michael, thank you for the invitation. Um, it, it was a pleasure to come here and just share something that is coming fresh out of the oven with you all. And you know, I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope you're having a great time at LCA. Thank you. Yeah, you can make billing. Yeah, you can make billing simple or very complicated. You're right, uh, but we are planning at least at Catalyst to keep all that logic inside our ERP system. So if you're giving, let's say, discounts or coupons to people and that stuff, that's all happening inside the ERP system. Because honestly, why would we re-implement the logic that a system has been doing for ages and it's doing it right? You know, so all that logic of giving discounts based on scale, it's already supported by most ERP systems. And that's why we like the decision of keeping Artifice as just a bridge between your ERP system or whatever system you're using. And then it's up for you and your company uh, to decide you know, what works for you. Cool. Florian? Um, no, more or less, yeah. Okay. And um, do you have any plans for sort of closing the loop the other way, as in the ERP system being able to report or to define a hard spin cylinder that says if you go over this threshold, you're going to be paying more than or whatnot, which is something that I guess customers might be yeah. interested in. Right? Not yet, but this is a fantastic idea, uh, mate. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just, just to be a bit more specific, it's not that you know, Artifice is just getting the silometer usage and throwing that in the ERP. It's also doing that mapping between the silometer uh, measurements, like your VM nano size, uh, with a service rate that you define and saying, you know, this maps to that, doing the maths, and then generating the invoice inside your ERP system with the product that, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what you're saying makes a lot of sense, and I think that um, as, you know, version two of that plugin with OpenERP, it would be nice to have the opposite thing going on. Yeah. John? Um, having had to write some of this interface for Bill and the other ones before, um, two of the hard problems I saw uh, there were dealing with auditing the billing data. Six months later, customer, more likely two months later, customer comes yeah. and says, you charge me too much. Yeah, yeah. Look, it, it is trusting that Silometer does its job, so it's trusting that it's getting uh, reliable metrics from Silometer. Right. But at the same time, when it comes to auditing, I think that's the case with pretty much every company, and that's why we retain information in the Artifice database uh, instead of just sending it somewhere else and you know pretending that it's done and we'll never need that again, because we we do expect that in, we may need to regenerate an invoice at some stage. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's why you also want to retain that information for a while. And then, you know, what that makes sense, it depends on the country you are. You know, maybe you also want to retain artifice data for seven years, 10 years. Uh, that's why it needs to be a configurable period of time. So I think we need to trust the other projects to do their job, but to some extent we need to implement some sensible error checks there uh, to make sure we're not doing stupid things, you know. Um, you trust them, but at the same time you, you, you implement the error checks. Sorry, say that, say that again. You could, yes. So, so do you have some connection between conceiving those services in the ERP system and then having those made available for deployment or whatever? So, so, so the connection happens in that component called uh, Clerk. Uh, the connection happens in that component called Clerk. And the way you define your service rates or your products or you know, your bill of materials, it, different ERPs will call this different things, uh, is up to you. The point is, at some stage you need to figure out that you probably want to charge, let's say, for a virtual machine and that the price will vary according to the virtual machine uh, flavor. Uh, and then you map them, you know, the measurements in Celometer that make sense for you to charge for, you map them um, uh, using Clark to your ERP system or whatever system you're using. Could be a CSV file with all the prices in there uh, or you know, now via the uh, web interface we provide. Um, and once that mapping is done, that's what is being, uh, going to be charged. No, no, no. You, you define the prices on your ERP system, but at some stage, something needs to know how to map a meter that is coming, a measurement that is coming from zero meter to what product or what price in there, right? So it's just that mapping that needs to be in there, right? And now we're exploring the option of not having the prices uh, somewhere else, of you keeping that information inside Artifice. But again, uh, it's a creative spike happening inside Catalyst, and if it's the right thing or not, I think it's just by engaging with people that will find out. Yes. Can you tell me how many bills per day are we generating on what are How many bills per day? Okay, so Silometer is collecting data from OpenStack at the frequency you define. Right, and often that might be you know, every 10 minutes, every five minutes, collecting data from the different projects. Now, how often you generate the bills, uh, that's up to you. As, as I said, you have the REST APIs and the command line tool to generate the bill or the invoice at any time you want. Uh, at Catalyst, because that makes sense for our business, we're generating it monthly and for the uh, period of, the, of that month. Um, so. No, we haven't done much performance testing yet. Look, as I said, you know, this, this was an opportunity. Uh, Michael was keen to bring, bring in people who are just developing new things for OpenStack and you know, sharing that with others. So we haven't done much performance testing yet. I think this is yet to come. This is just the early stages of let's have a discussion and see what a billing solution for, for OpenStack would look like and potentially create the blueprints. But you know, before creating the blueprints, it's good for you to explore some ideas and see what works and what doesn't. Uh, otherwise, you can propose some nonsense things, right? Yeah. No more questions? Cool. Thank you very much.